I'm driving the all new Nissan Z car. Do you need any other reason to watch this video? It's the return of a legend. When Datsun brought the 240Z to the US 50 years ago, it shattered our expectations of what Japanese automakers were capable of. The last letter of the alphabet became the first word in sports cars. It even went racing. Like all cars, it changed. Numbers ascended to 60, 300, and 350. An X was added to the Z for some reason. And like many of us, it got larger and heavier. Plus, there was the Datsun to Nissan marketing debacle that brought the company to its knees. Z cars soldiered on, but the sixth generation 370 seemed all but ignored lately. It all leads up to this, the 2023 Nissan Z. No numbers, no extra X, just an elegant statement, Zorro who would be proud. And generation seven sounds like a lucky number. This Z is not completely all new. It rides on the same architecture as the outgoing model. And before the editor starts reaching for the sad trombone sound, note that it has been modified. Torsional rigidity is up by about 11%. And by doing this, Nissan keeps the Z affordable. And I think we all want that. How affordable? Well, at the press event in Las Vegas, Nevada, Nissan says the sport model begins at $41,000, so with shipping. That's some 10 grand more than the outgoing 370, but it's well appointed at that price. Add 10 grand for the performance model to get 19 inch raised wheels, limited slip diff, a Bose sound system, and heated leather front seats. This is some six grand less than a comparable Toyota Supra. There's also the limited edition proto spec at 54,000 bucks. Only 240 are being made, get it? It's most likely sold out already. The Z's design is stuffed with heritage. Its cabin gets the classic three gauges high on the dash. The rear is a reminder of the gorgeous 300CX, my personal favorite. But during the press briefing, it's clear Nissan was inspired by the 240. The overall silhouette of the new car is as close as you can come to a 50-year-old design, considering all of the modern safety and government regulation requirements. And much has been said about the gaping grille. In person, it looks perfectly integrated. Round headlights were ruled out because of aerodynamics. These pay homage to the reflections found in the cavity of the 240s. And I do like this spear that elongates the look of the roofline. Here's what makes all 2023 Zs go, a twin turbo three liter V6 that makes 68 more horsepower than the outgoing 370. We're talking 400 horses now and 350 pound feet of torque. That's up by 30% and available at 1600 RPM. Somehow engineers stuffed loads of cooling into the front end. Twin turbos make a lot of heat. Choose between a nine-speed automatic or this six-speed manual, there's no price difference. Clutch weight is very manageable, take-up is just right. This performance model gets synchro rev match, it has power on shift, no need to lift off the throttle. There's a sport mode, I didn't notice much difference. Like all Zs before, this is rear drive. In addition to the stiffer chassis, the suspension geometry has been changed, and there are monotube shocks for better control and response. 400 horsepower, lots of flow and torque, a six-speed manual, and a weight at 3,500 pounds. Sounds like the recipe for fun. Performance models with manual transmissions get advanced launch assist for smooth starts. I'm thinking zero to 60 is a four-second affair. What's really great, when you punch it, you get a great engine sound and you can feel the back end move around. It would be really easy to oversteer this car. Lots of fun. The new body isn't just for looks. It manages aerodynamics better. Nissan claims a 9% overall reduction in rear lift from the 370. And the added aero bits on the performance model that I'm driving reduces front and rear lift significantly over the base sport. Under hard throttle, there's a little turbo whistle if you listen closely, but it's mostly engine growl. The Z is moderately quiet. 
Come on, it's a sports car, it's not a Lexus. Besides, you want to hear the engine. It sounds great. I'm pleasantly surprised by the Z's comforts. For a sports car, it tolerates the largest bumps that I could find outside of Las Vegas. Could be a decent road tripper for a couple that's into performance. My favorite manual transmission these days is found in the Cadillac Blackwings, but those cars are twice the price if you can even find one. This gearbox is no slouch. Nice crisp shifts, shorter throws, good stuff. People don't buy sports cars for safety tech, but the Z is stuffed with standard kit like automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, blind spot warning, and lane departure warning. Uh, lane keeping is not a thing. This is a sports car. You are the lane keep system. On center field is locked down. The steering weight is nice and hefty, just the way I like it. There is road feel coming up through the steering wheel, but it is electric power steering, so there's not tons and tons. But, you know, pretty well done. The Z is just a hoot to throw into corners. Think of it as a more powerful, more mature Toyota GR86 or Subaru BRZ. Lots of fun. Well, until it comes to filling it up, fuel economy for the automatic, the EPA's average rating is 22 miles per gallon. For the manual, it drops to 20 mpg. Premium fuel is specified. You know, it's okay. It's 400 horsepower. It's a sports car. And we need more of those. Back to price, 41 grand for a base model is hardly Versa money, but that's still some 10,000 bucks less than an Audi TT and 3,000 less than the four-cylinder Supra, which doesn't offer a manual. Brakes. Brakes are very important when it comes to sports cars. And that would be my gear sliding forward. Should have secured it better. The brakes are pretty darn good on this thing. Like I said, the interior is a callback to Z cars over the years. Everything is placed to be seen and reached easily by the pilot, the wheel telescopes now. Neither cramped or stretch out spacious, this is a car you wear. Nissan says the Porsche Cayman and Chevy Corvette are competitors. Those are easily 20 grand more expensive, and the Z doesn't have the interior quality of those challengers. Here's a quick look at the blue cockpits with a spendier look and more visual pop than the black, which is kind of ordinary. Door releases feel great. Sports cars normally have tiny pockets. These are generous. Engineers got creative with the center console. There are two cup holders if you want them. And really, none in this class are going to let you stash an iPad in here. Same here. It's pretty tiny. Chairs are supportive and hard cornering. Seems to me they'd even work for larger drivers. Inserts are nice and grippy. Adjustments are near the center console. The gauge cluster is a 12-inch display. I didn't have much time to explore how configurable it is. The user interface has the usual rudimentary Nissan graphics. Nothing flashy, no casual voice prompts. It can be configured to your liking, and the touch response is solid. Wireless charging for phones? Check. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard. On performance models, it's wireless. This is a sports car, not an SUV, so not a lot of cargo space. Besides, there's only two seats. How much space do you need, huh? There's no storage room or spare tire under the floor. At best, the equivalent of carry-on luggage for two fits in here. A couple suitcases and small personal items. But hey, it's better than a Miata. It would help organization if there were seat back pockets. I do believe it's red light, green light time. Green light. The Z is back. That in and of itself is a great thing. Its design is the perfect blend of classic and modern cues. That's a tough balancing act. The added power and rear driving dynamics are exactly what a sports car should deliver. And a manual transmission is available across the board and no extra cost. Yellow lights. 41 grand for the base sport model is a decent value, but the outgoing 370 could be had for much less money. While fuel economy is similar to the competition, it's not an especially efficient mode of transportation. Only two models makes choosing easy, just pick a color, but the 10 grand price spread between sport and performance is kind of dramatic. Red lights. 
In black, the cabin is kind of austere. I think it's time Nissan thought about a snazzier user interface. And there are the usual sports car issues. Cozy cabins, small storage spaces, and limited cargo room. Certainly not everyone wants a two-seat performance machine. Heck, Honda almost sells as many CRVs as all sports cars combined. Still, Nissan says there's evidence that the segment is making a resurgence. Sales are up 25% from 2018. Considering the price, the performance, the handling of the Z car, you kind of have to take this as a gift from Nissan. There aren't an awful lot of sports cars to choose from these days. Word is, Nissan engineers and designers were so passionate about producing this seventh generation, some volunteered their effort to make sure it happened. The Z is definitely a Nissan touchstone, a machine that has defined the company for five decades. Let's hope a car this fun will be around in another 50 years. A couple things before I go. There are rumors of a less expensive model powered by a turbocharged four-cylinder. I asked the Nissan folks about that and got the usual, we don't comment on future product line. The steering wheel configuration was based off a previous GTR wheel because research showed that owners didn't replace it the way others were swapped out. And I'll point out that I used Nissan's car-to-car -car footage since we all drove alone. Hard for me to shoot running footage when I'm by myself. The GoPro stuff is all mine. Hope you got something out of my look at the new Nissan Z. No numbers anymore, just Z. Uh, which brings me to my fun fact. This does get sort of different names in different markets. In Japan, it's the Fair Lady Z. And if you don't know that story, look it up. It's actually named after the old 1960s movie, My Fair Lady. Seriously. And in Canada, you Canadians, uh, it's called Z, the Nissan Z, which, yeah, it is Z, but you guys pronounce it differently. No judgment, I'm just saying it's different. And one story before I go, you might remember that about three years ago, me and a whole bunch of automotive journalists were invited back to Japan to Nissan's design studios, where we saw everything that the car company was going to be doing for the next five years. And this was one of them. It was right in the center of the courtyard in that yellow color. You couldn't miss it. Everybody gravitated to it right away. And now I can share with you what it looks like. Pretty cool car. Remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications, follow me on Twitter. I'm a riot on Twitter. Uh, and if you have a question, leave it in the comments, okay? I'll try to get to it. Okay, I'm not a riot on Twitter, but you know, whatever. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.